Hello, it's Duncan. Even though we are now retrying away transient failures to talk to an external service, we still have to deal with long-lived errors like the server being down. Today we'll look at how to use result types to defer decisions about errors, rather than handling them where they happen. In the last episode, we wrote this retry function, and that allows us to retry calls to the value of client because they were failing random. But that's an external service, and we know that it could just die. And if it does just die, we're still going to get an exception because we're only retrying once. We could retry more than once, but if their server was down, that's not going to help, and we're just going to sit retrying and retrying. So what we'd like to do is handle exceptions that leak even though we have retried. We speak to the owner of Guilty Rose, and she says it would be nice to know if we weren't getting prices because of an error. So it'd be nice to show it in the user interface somewhere. Here's the code that renders that user interface. And you can see here is where it prices up an item. So it goes to our pricing. And this is where if an exception does leak, this will just fail. This listing won't go to happen. And here's the testing for that rendering. Maybe at a bit of a higher level than we'd like. So this is a place we could simulate errors in picking up stock and see what happens. But at the moment, we have this map that we use as our pricing. And we pass get value in as the function that will look up an item to a price. Instead of trying to persuade get value to throw exceptions, I think what we'll do is replace this with a lambda. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and make a variable out of it. And that is our pricing. And its type is item to price. Not very helpful giving it a name here. And at the moment, that's just bound to getting a value out of our map. But we could replace that with some code. So instead of doing that, we could say when it, and then take these, replace that with our arrow, and get rid of our commas. And a when needs to be exhaustive, we can solve that problem by making that null, which will cover this case here as well. So now price lookup is unused. And I don't know why IntelliJ does that. That's just a bit strange, isn't it? Never mind. Now price lookup is unused, but the behavior of this should be the same. Let's find out by running these tests. Okay, so we were right about that. Now we've got a lambda rather than a get, we can put in some code to raise an error. So here we can say error simulated price failure. And let's run that. And as expected, that does fail. Let's have a look. And here's our problem. If errors do leak out of our retries, in fact, we're not actually doing retries at the moment here, then we'll get an internal server error. That's because listing has thrown in here. So let's go fix that in here for now in order to give us a test that we can then refactor around. So we'll pull this out into its own little variable, and then we can surround that with a try. Say, if we catch any normal sort of exceptions, then maybe our price is just null for now. Let's see what effect that has on our test. So we have got an output back. Let's compare it with our approved version. You see the change is that our item doesn't have a price anymore, and so we rendered it as blank. Well, that's almost the right thing, but what we actually want to do is render it as, say, error. So let's go to find that file. This is the actual one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approve this as almost right. And now this is our approved version. And then run again. That is what we have. But now what we actually want is for the kumquat to have error in here rather than null. So we're going to edit this one. I would say the kumquat should say error. And that should fail, but give us something to aim for. Right. So going back to our list stop tests, what we want is for the price to be error, the string error, instead of this null. But at the moment, we're saying item to map today and price, where this price here is the actual price, a nullable thing. But we want to convert that into a string. So let's do that by pulling the string that we are going to use here out into a parameter, and that is price string. Now, I don't know what happened there. IntelliJ just seemed to give up. So we'll try again, but this time we'll create a variable, which is price string, make that our parameter, and then convert back to expression body. 
Now we're passing a price string into here. We can go back up, make a variable out of this. Inline this one. And in here we can say that's our error. Let's see what that does it for us. Not quite. Let's have a look what the problem is. Oh, and for some reason, the handlebar seems to be unstable. Or maybe it's when we edit the file by hand, tabs get split out. I don't know. But we should be able to just approve this now and run again. Good. Returning to here, that's a bit ugly. I think we should be able to move this bit into here. And just check that's true. Good. We'll just run all tests to check we haven't broken anything else. And that seems fine. I think we should probably go to check that in. So this is show pricing failures in UI. Now returning to the list handler, this is getting busier and busier. It seems to me that probably the listing shouldn't be involved in getting the pricing at all. It would be nice if items came to the list handler ready priced. We look at item. We find that it doesn't have a price field, but there's no reason why we shouldn't put one in. So let's do that here and allow it to be nullable. So we say we have price, which is a nullable price. And if we default that to null, then apart from having to name this parameter, none of the code around it should have to change. Let's try running all these tests. And we have failures in two string for items because once again, we've changed the representation. This keeps on happening to us. And looking at this, we seem to have basically two tests of the same thing. We have item types for two string and we have two string shows type. Well, they're both basically saying the same thing. So I think I'll take that one out. And this was a test really to show that our types are rendered as something um, useful for debug. That's a handy test. And this is almost as good a place as any to test it. But I think we can loosen this test. So instead of using assert equals, we can use hamcrests assert that. And then we can say that items to string, and we can use matches like contains substring. What's the substring we care about? That's this type is country banana. So let's put that in there. Now this can go, we import that and run the tests again. So that's now testing just the bit of two string that we actually care about. So we can add things to item without breaking our tests every time. Maybe commit that. And we have an interesting thing here where, oh, apparently we don't need to call two string. So remove that. Good. Commit and commit. Right. Oh no, I've been a complete idiot. I'm just testing a string. Let's undo that. Remembering that what we really wanted here was this test item here. That's this thing that we wanted to test against. We can roll that back to get us to here and then put that in there. That's what we should have been testing. Let's run that. Good. And that I think is an amend commit to spare our brushes. So now let's go and look at where we could populate the price. The list handler gets its items from the stock list that comes from this listing function here that takes the time and loads the stock list. And the stock list is the thing that has a list of items inside it. We now said if the items in the stock list came ready populated so that list handler didn't have to do it itself. We'll work up to that, I think, by doing it in list handler so we keep our test passing and the interface the same and then move that functionality out. So I think that's this items here. So let's pull that out as a little variable. And here we've taken the items out of the stock list and we've populated them. We're left in fact with just the map of string to string that we're going to render. It's not really where we want here. So I think we'll undo that. Let's see if we can build the thing that we do want first of all. So what we want is a priced stock list, which will just be a stock list and will be the stock list that comes in priced with priced by maybe our pricing function. Now, obviously we don't have that. So we'll make it as an extension function on stock list. Now, what would this do? Well, something like we're doing up here 
going and asking the item to be priced. So I think we would return this, the stock list, copied with its items. The items are going to be the original items mapped to another function we don't yet have, which is it priced by the pricing. And if that existed, we would almost compile. Let's see what our issue here is. Oh, it doesn't know the type of this. This wants to be item. How do we price up an item? Well, that is just this copy where well, my price is now asked the pricing to price me. We have a problem now, and that's what happens if this pricing fails. We know that it might fail because it's talking across the network. And we can't use null to say that it did fail because no price is a valid return from the service. So we need something that's either our price or not our price or something else. And really that something else might as well be the exception that happens if it goes wrong. We can do that with the result for K in item. So instead of saying our price is a nullable price, we can say that our price is a result of either a nullable price or exception. And because we want to differentiate between when we have and we haven't actually asked, we can make that itself nullable. So when that's nullable, it means we haven't asked. When it's an exception, it means we have asked and we got an error. And when it's price or null inside it here, it means we have asked, we didn't get an error, but we didn't get a price back. There was no price for this item. So that's laid an awful lot into one little type signature there. Returning to listing, we can create that error type with result from. The result from running the pricing on this. That's quite sweet. We'll go back to making this an expression body and the same here. Maybe drop this down as well. Now, going back up, we now have a price stock list, but we're still not rendering it. Let's use price stock list in here and use the types to guide us. What's the price string going to be? Well, instead of asking to price the item, we've already done that now. So we know that this can't fail. I think I'm going to write it out as a when, at least to start with. So that's when my item price. Just take this away so it compiles a bit better. So when the item price is null, that means we won't have fetched the price. So if it's null, it's the empty string. Item price, remember, is a result. So we can ask, is it success? And if it is success, then we want to use it. And we can do that by assigning in here. And here, then it knows that price is success. And we can say our value is two strings. And if it's failure, we don't need any details out of it. We just need to say that's an error. Right, let's see whether that passes our tests. That seems to be a spectacular failure. Goodness knows how that can have happened. I think maybe we need to rebuild our project. And then rerun tests. Nope. Wonderful. Thank you, IntelliJ. Maybe we'll try rebuilding on the command line. So finally, in desperation, we will ask Gradle to run that task. And now run all our tests again. That forces a rebuild. Waits a long time. But at least succeeds in running our tests with one failure here. Let's have a look. Oh, we're left with rendering null when we have a null price rather than blank. We knew how to fix that, I think. And it was something like we asked the price's value whether it was null and only do a two string if it's not null. Otherwise, it's an empty string. And I think, in fact, there's even a method for that, which is called or empty. Let's try that. Fantastic. So that feels like a check in. Prefetch item prices. Good. Okay, so now we have all the functionality we want, which is to say that the list handler renders a price stock list. It's just it's having to do the pricing itself. What we want to do is move this functionality up so that the list handler is only doing the rendering. So let's remind ourselves who calls this. It's here, and we can see that we're creating our stock object here. And this stock list here does the load on demand. So we'd like that to also do the pricing. So let's pull this thing out as a variable all the way up at the top. And listing is as good a name as any. And we'll give it the type in order to replace it with a lambda. 
get rid of the now, and now we can say this is a lambda. Looks like that. What do we want? We want not just the stock list, we want the price stock list. So let's go and take the code. So if we take these out of here, we can replace that by stock list and then inline that. And now going back to our roots, we can say stock, stock list, price by, and paste our code into here. This is priced by our pricing, or at least it would be if this wasn't a result type. So we need to map in that. Well, let's run all the tests and see whether that does it. And it actually does. Returning to listing then, we now no longer need the pricing here. But is pricing enabled is still being used to render the columns. I think as value of is still returning errors, we can actually test this in our test server by just removing our retry for now and running that. And now when we look at the page, we'll see that here we have an error as we might expect. If we refresh, no errors that time, refresh again, no errors, refresh. Well, that's typical, isn't it? Not seeing any errors. Ah, there's one. Good. I mean, not good, but it's handy. Now we can come back and undo. Now we've seen the effect. So let's just remind ourselves what we've done. Well, fundamentally, we've gone to item and we've added in a price. And we said that the price will remember whether or not there was a problem trying to fetch it. We use that price when we come to render our stock list in here. And because we've got failure or success, we can render either the actual price or error where we have a problem. And then we with the code that actually populates the list. I was originally doing it one by one here. We moved it so that it was populating the whole stock list. And then we moved that out into the roots. And so that's now here. And Lambda is a code that we're not going to run yet. So we've got something here that maps between a stock and a populated stock list, but we're not doing it yet. We're only doing it when the list handler is invoked, when the request comes in. I'm not sure everything's entirely in the right place yet, but this technique of deferring errors rather than failing on them it's quite a powerful one because it allows there to be an error in one place and what we do about it to be in another place, in fact, at another time. Everything feels a little bit untidy at the moment, though. So I think next time we'll probably have a little tidy up. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you've enjoyed this, then I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Thanks for watching.